this is Lewis Gray from the University of the Highlands and Islands um, and I just wanted to show you today how to use Simulink online um, instead of the usual downloaded version of Simulink. So you have access to this with your student account uh, because you are studying engineering. So if we log in here and just look for Simulink online, that's the easiest way to find it. Um, so uh, that will do there, just click on that first one there, that will bring it up. Um, you may need to log on here, in which case use your UHI um, account, so your student number and your normal UHI password. So we start using Simulink Online, just click on that. I think we'll automatically log me in. Um, and this window you'll be quite familiar with if you've used the downloaded version of Simulink. So we're going to build a new model. So we're going to go on to Create Model. And what I'll do today for you is just a very small transfer function and, and show you how to do a step response of that and a Bode plot of that. So first of all, we want to open the library browser here to get our components. Just take a little while. And uh, we're going to do a transfer function. So they're found in this continuous menu here. You just scroll down a little bit and you will see it here. Or alternatively, you can type it in up here as well. But it sometimes does take a wee while to find the thing you're looking for. So if you know where it is, it's a bit quicker. So we're just going to use this one. Nice, simple transfer function. Click and drag it. Left click and drag it onto your blank sheet there. Again, sometimes that does take a little while. Um, the other thing you want to do is if you're presenting reports for university, you want to make this a bit bigger so that you can definitely see the numbers inside of it. Uh, the person marking your report isn't wanting to just see numerator, denominator in this box. They're wanting to see the actual numbers. So you want to do that. Um, and then from the same library browser, we'll need to put an input in. Um, so if we choose a in one type of input, this is just a variable that comes from Simulink when you run it. And we also want something to see our measurements on. So an out one terminal from the SYNCS library is probably the best for that. And then we want to connect those up just by left clicking and dragging. OK, so you'll probably be used to um, just running these. That's not really going to do anything for you in this case. What we really want to do is a step response and then possibly a body plot as well. And by the way, everything is saved uh, when you're using MATLAB or Simulink online. Everything is saved. I close that browser for the moment. Everything is saved in this MATLAB drive here. So that's where you'll find your files when you save them. And with MATLAB and Simulink, you have to save them when you try to run them anyway. But we won't save that yet because I want to show you a couple of things. So the first thing we possibly want is a Bode plotter. Oh, or maybe, yeah, we'll go for the Bode plotter first. So I'm not sure where that is in the library. So I'm just going to search for that um, by typing in Bode there and then hitting return. It does take a little while to find it, but And the thing we want here is just this body plot. So again, left click and drag it onto your circuit design. There we go, on the black page there. And then the other thing we might want is a step. So I think um, we should be able to find that as well, just by clicking in step here. OK. So what we probably want is the one from the control toolbox. There's rather a lot there, actually, which makes it rather difficult to see. And the Simulink design optimization. I haven't actually used these. I'm not sure which one would be the best one. Uh, linear step response plot. Let's go for that one. 
Okay, check linear step response characteristics. So click and drag that on as well. Obviously, you've got the options of quite a lot of different things. You can do Nyquist plots, um, Nichols plots, really a whole load of things. Okay, then the next thing we need to do is configure these two blocks to give us the plots we want. So starting with the Bode plotter, if you double left click on that, it will open a dialog box for you here. Um, and the thing you want to add is you want to add inputs and outputs. So let's put a plus sign on here. Click a signal in the model to select it. And there's our signal there. We'll add that to our plot with this arrow here. And then to add another signal, again, click on the plot on the model. Oh, can't see it now. And we should be able to add that as well. I'm hoping. And then if we want to change the output one to being an output measurement, and if your input one has come up with the wrong thing, um, sometimes they come up with one of these other boxes. It needs to be an input per perturbation. Okay, so just to show you how I did that before, just click on the wire. It appears here in this part here, and you click on this little arrows box to move it into the area where you're going to be actually testing from. And you'll always need one input and one output at least. Okay, then we can apply that. And we could in fact run that now and see the response. Uh, but I'll leave it just now and we'll set up the step plot as well. So the same idea, but let's just close this for the moment. Oh, another thing to suggest is if you want to see the plot when you double click on your block here, um, you might want to select show plot. So we'll do that. Um, we'll click apply, OK, and close that, which it has done. And then if we do the same with the linear one, um, the step tool here, we click plus to add the signals. So select an input signal and move it onto our analysis tool. Um, select an output signal. And again, move that onto our analysis tool as well. Make sure that they are set up correctly. So our input is an input perturbation. Our output is an output measurement. Um, that seems OK. I think that should be it. Again, we probably want to click Show Plot on Block Open. Click Apply. And OK. So now we're ready to run this. Um, if we just click the Run tool, you might need to change your step stop time here. So if you've got something that's quite slow reacting, uh, you might want to increase that. But meanwhile, we can just run this. It might ask me to save it, but it didn't, which is surprising. OK, and you can see what's going on when you're running it. Um, I'll just run that again to show you that. Down in the bottom here, it will show you what's going on. So let's run that again. Um, and down here, you can see what's going on. And then hopefully, if that's run correctly, we can see our two plots. So if we double click on this, it should open it. And that should have been our Bode diagram. I'm not sure why that's not. Oh, you possibly need to run the Bode diagram itself in here. So click again, run here. And that's our Bode diagram there. Uh, which looks approximately right, because this is obviously a first order system. It's only got one pole, s equals minus one, on the bottom line there. So that seems right. And it's got no gain, so we're sitting at zero decibels um, at our low frequencies here. And zero degrees phase shift. So that seems fine. Um, minus 45 degrees is also indicative of one pole. And this slope of 20 decibels per decade drop is also indicative of one pole. So that seems fine. And we can close that. By the way, if you need to change your configuration, this first box here will reopen your parameters. So you can do that. So you can change what your inputs and outputs are. Um, let's close that just now. And you can plot this as you can with normal um, MATLAB. Not sure what this button here is. Response optimization. I don't think you need to use that. 
Um, okay, and as with normal MATLAB, I believe you can select points on the plot just by left clicking and then right clicking um, to get your frequencies and your magnitudes. I'm not sure if you can do the characteristics. Yes, you can. You can do the characteristics as well. So as with MATLAB download, you can get or simulate download and get peak response, your stability margins. So if we click all stability margins, um, this is a totally stable system, so it doesn't have any margins, but you would normally get points that would suggest that. OK, you can look at that for yourselves. So that's quite easy. Um, and then if we want to look at the step response, we can do the same with step response. Double click on our step response. That looks rather odd. Maybe we need to run that. Let's run that and see what happens. See if that gives us a better response. Yeah. So we have a step response here. I'm not sure what this yellow stuff is. Um, I think possibly that might just be my computer not working correctly. But anyway, you can see the response. Here it is here. It's indicative of a first order um, system. Um, if we right click on that, we can again get the characteristics, peak response, settling time, um, characteristics, rise time you might want. I'm not sure if we can remove this yellow area. I wonder if we can drag that. Yes, we can. So we can drag that out of the way. I'm not sure why that's come up there. It might be something to do with the cursors that we set. Oh, OK, that seems to adjust the axis. Oh, there might be a way of doing that better here. So if we go delete here, yes, that's better. There you go. So all I did was delete it. I clicked on the yellow space, right clicked, and then click delete. And you get a far better response then. And we can click on these points again to get our measurements for these points. So rise time 2.2 seconds, settling time 3.9. Well, if you're showing this to a, or if you're copying this to a report, it's probably best to move um, your boxes with your information out of the way so that the reader can see both values. And you might want to just make that a bit bigger as well so we can see that more clearly. I think I'd probably do it this way. Yeah. Just so that they're very clear to the reader. OK, I think that was really, really about it. Obviously, editing your bot, your transfer function is much the same as before. So, hope that's been useful for you. Bye for now.